April to Endemic to see maybe they've got some more tricks up their sleeve. Trying to think of what Simplicity Battlegrounds are still up that they might. They've had pick on each one, right? They have had second pick. Yeah, they've yeah, picked so every they've, single battleground. Yeah, so they picked every one. So it's yeah. like, how many do you have left? Uh, they only picked Towers of Doom in the last series. They've picked Volskaya Foundry before. They've picked some Dragon. Volskaya, though, is it's gone. So maybe Dragonshire. It has been one of the things that Michael Udall talked about was bringing in Kieran Dansky for mm -hmm. some shot calling. And with that roster in the previous phase, the amount of times that I saw Dahaka being left in the top lane while this, the bottom lane was being sieged and the slow rotations in those situations, maybe that's enough to where they can become a better, a better Dragonshire team because there were some major flaws with some of those late game shot calls on Dragonshire with this previous roster before they brought in those two members. Well, we are going to Sky Temple. Endemic's choice. So as you say, simplicity, much more favored toward first pick. Well, we've seen Abathur banned out both on Towers and on Cursed, twice by Endemic against Simplicity. This is another battleground where Abathur could have tremendous value. You gotta imagine that's gonna be there. So if you're strategizing Sergeant Hammer, this is not normally considered a Sergeant Hammer map. We saw the Illidan pick that had moments where it's shown early, but if you're gonna play more meta, this is gonna be the map. If you still have some more tricks up your sleeve, this is it. Is it the Tahaka? Is it Global ETC? Is I it think, Paul Stab? I think I would like to see Zuna go back to Tahaka. Not that his Illidan was bad, but his Tahaka has gotten them two wins. It was the hammer too, but I you have to give credit to how well he played on that Tahaka two games in a row. Yeah, the amount of drags that he landed in the plays, and then of course the Volskaya game, he landed the drag, got the setup, and then the isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a that's a highlight play that you can feel good about. And I think those are moments where you're like, hey, look, you're pretty good on this hero. Maybe we'll keep putting you on it. Uh, but again, Sky Temple does have a little bit different feel to it in terms of the global priority, the rotational control, and when teams get ahead, it does get hard to come back on. The Hanzo that we saw, at the, at the end of the game, Hanzo's hero damage numbers were not that high, but he didn't have the opportunities. But his siege numbers and his boss control, which doesn't get highlighted, was incredibly high, and this is another area where he could shine. Yeah, scatter arrows are great on temples too. You can pretty much yeah. guarantee that you get some kills there. Um, Li Ming is another classic pick for Sky Temple those double reset compositions if anyone can get their hands on Genji, which doesn't seem to be the case in this series. And Simplicity played that Abathur Li Ming composition before. Yeah, this is the one you were talking about earlier. The Abathur, Sonia, Murd, and Kirzim Li Ming. It was a rough game. Yeah, well, freedom. But yeah, you. that's the problem is you fall behind <laughs> that hard versus freedom, and you're probably not getting back into the game. But they seem to have a much better system versus Endemic. And we're about to see what that system is for Sky Temple. We've seen a lot of Genji bands so far. Uh, obviously, the first two with the hammer compositions, the last one may be a little bit different. See if they continue to respect that. Maybe it's a pick that they want to see if they can get themselves. After losing that last game, when you bring in a pocket strategy, it makes sense to take full time to start talking out that idea of how the draft is going to go down. It's very likely that they know what ban they're going to ban here. And it's a lot more about, okay, when we ban this, what did they ban? What do we pick as a result? And what's going to happen? Just going into this draft with no surprises. Spending every second. It's going to be the Malfurion, which means that does Simplicity make a play around the Deckard? Because what... We've only seen Udall on Malf and Deckard wow. without the lone Alex Straza. Genji, obviously, could be high priority. But, okay, I was going to say, if they really play around the Deckard, I'd be surprised. It still could come up unless it's picked here. But a first pick Deckard, eh, not always the, the best. Unless you're endemic. They did all right with that. Yeah. And they may pick it here especially with Malfurion being gone. Although, the saving possibilities, not as easy, but stay a while and listen as Genji tries to get into the fight. That should be a hosty Genji, right? Maybe. Oh, they're doing the Dahaka Abathur again. Yeah, the last time Endemic was on this, they were early on the Blaze and Maev rotation on this, but the Dahaka Abathur is something that we have seen. 
Uh, again, it could possibly be the solo support avatar. This is one of the more common battlegrounds that we've seen, but there's going to be a very tanky front line. Blaze ETC picked up here on the side of Simplicity. Blaze is nice because if Endemic is thinking that the pairing with Abathur might be a Tracer, then you have the Bunker to deal with Pulse Bombs or just any sort of possible dive situation, scary thing, with the clone of Abathur. Speaking of scary, look at those two backliners. That's a mean look. You talking about Widowmaker? Widowmaker Nova. Mm hmm. That's that's a one shot, one kill composition if I've ever heard of one. Hanzo being taken away. Again, I think when you look at this, Genji, you know you're getting the burst damage, you know you're getting that single target focus, but you gotta have something else. And I think Hanzo takes away that something else, but also, again, is kind of a tracer counter in the sense that he can poke very well, but also just the overall boss control. Seems like Endemic might have a trick up their sleeve this go round. Trying to figure out if Dameski or Biggie is going to play that Abathur and what that means as a result for what other backliner is going with it. Is it Jaina? Is it Greymane? Greymane? End of the weekend, folks. Great man. Words are hard. Uh, you know who <laughs> used to play a little bit of Abathur in the old roster before he switched roles? Just saying. Michael Udall? Sky Temple. Is it Michael Udall? Sky Temple brings a different meta at times. I mean, look at EU. It has been the most common solo support one that they have played. Chen. Not serious, but I'm just thinking back to a fun Sky Temple game that I casted with Trixler, the last mid-season brawl. Without a Chen on Sky Temple. Samuro is how it kind of started earlier. Balira is still Ooh, up. Ooh, that is correct. Balira has become meta. And a Balira hopping onto a Genji in rotations. Genji does not live. You can't mobility if you're silent. Post level seven, you are dead. 100% to zero, you are dead. Barring you hit your Q after the silence. Okay. Which is pretty easy. <laughs> But who's your solo range? Because you took Hanzo off the board. Phoenix? For the whole Yita, guide my okay. Path. So it will be somewhat meta. Just waiting on that ranged. So Jaina and Phoenix are possibilities on both sides of the table here. I think whatever endemic gets, they'll take, mm -hmm. seems like. I feel like I haven't ever seen a second Phoenix with a clone, but the attack speed that you get and then the shield would probably be very annoying. Maybe not though. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that when he came out, as all pro teams would do is try it. And the fact that we don't see it makes me think that Probably not as likely as something like a Greymane or a Jaina there. Lee Ming, I think, is still a possibility For here, simplicity. just because mm -hmm. it could be a K1 pro hero, but... Oh yeah, and double resets. Yeah. The light abandons no man. Dragon Blade with the Divine Shield. Gonna make it a thing. Double resets. Blaze ETC to zone for it. A little bit from that Uther 2, and then the Dragon Blade, the Divine Shield. And so, who, who is this going to be? All right. Yeah, Greymane, I think, makes a little bit more sense than the Phoenix at this point. It mm -hmm. gives you a little bit more all-in potential, but it also helps you survive a little bit more against that onslaught that will be coming in from the Genji. So the Executioner potentials there might even see a Cursed Bullet to try and deal with that ETC. You know, we haven't seen a lot in the way of Mosh Pit, but you look at the side, there's a dragon in isolation from Tahaka, generally gonna be on the front line. Johanna is really that, if you see a power slide coming, you don't necessarily, if your iron skin is available, you are smashing the W as fast as possible. Even if you stun, the Condemn's gonna go out, and you need to be able to cancel the Mosh Pit, and that does work. 
because that there's not a lot of interrupts outside of Johanna and Tahaka. Mm -hmm. There are none outside of Johanna and Tahaka. I will raise you this too. We have not seen a Michael Udall Karazim yet. That is a hard support, and you are asking to be able to land those palms consistently to stop the double reset from happening. Not saying anything against Michael Udall. We know he's put a lot of time into his supporting, but the work is cut out for him in this game. Yeah, Karazim is normally that pocket hero that is a more advanced, that even some of the, the long-standing supports have even there, like, ah, maybe I could do something different. A hero that might be able to replace the Karazim style in the coming weeks is Oregod himself, as he's got a few changes coming here soon. Oh, yeah. His early game and his sustained healing, a lot better. Good to hear. It's been a while since we've had the Bark Bark back in. Isn't that what people call him? Yeah, bark Bark. Bark Bark. Okay. Bark, bark. That was a, wait, who's playing? Biggie, that's a Biggie Abathur. Just getting used to the new roles, folks. That is K1 Pro Genji, ooh. Yeah, definitely. Who's he playing Li Ming? Definitely not what we traditionally see. So it looks like that, because the Genji role, for the most part, was a role that when Zuna was in the back line would play the Genji. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's just something that Hosty has not practiced a ton. And Li Ming's been around, you know, a while. Suitable hero there. Laning setup is a bit lacking for Simplicity in this double reset comp, as you can see. And especially with an Uther who never wants to be soloing in a lane. Then this is something that potentially Endemic can take advantage of, either with a really fast giant camp and then invading with that Grey Main, Johanna, and Karzim. Simplicity are quick to recognize this. They leave ETC, but Endemic are coming in. Yeah, and that's the thing is that the minute that pings on the other side of the map, when Grey Main and team pick it up, they're going to be like, okay, you know, it was scary, but we know we're safe. So they pick it up. K1 Pro, need a bit of damage. See if he tries to go in here. V Kid, there's going to be a heal and iron skin used. Very afraid of that swift strike. I think until level four, probably would have lived through, but definitely better safe than sorry. So Giants achieved by both of the teams and duking it out, brawling. Though so Genji's been sent back to the mid to soak against that Abathur. It's all about when we see teams start to head up for the bruisers. Who gets the defense on those bruiser camps? Yeah, when it comes to boss clear, it's definitely in favor. There's going to be a power slide and a stun over onto Dainsky, who's still in that Worgen form. Going to go ahead and disengage out, but Greymane definitely has much better race potential on those. You can see he's already making the rotation up, presumably to that siege camp. So we'll see how that is responded to by Simplicity. King Calf pressing W. And Li Ming's trying to land those skill shots. Always a fun time. Does not feel great as a <laughs> skill shot hero, but it happens to even the best, as yeah. you can see here. So when it happens to you at home, maybe give your ETC a break. We're just checking out the build from uh, Dainsky's Greymane with Viciousness and Eyes in the Dark. Eyes in the Dark is hopefully going to help Greymane not become victim of the first reset. Well, Michael, you don't give us a different flavor. What do you make of the Karazim ally? Yeah, Spirit Ally, it's like the healing totem that you would see from him here. So uh, we've seen all sorts of the totems, but or all sorts of the allies now with an air ally too. I think that was that mid-season brawl, but here you're a lot more worried about the double burst and the ability damage of Genji and Li Ming. And though we know that earth ally and the auto attacks can help with that, just having the healing to be able to stand over the point and to sustain his own healing, maybe the difference between a reset and not. Now that W is much better because you have to wait until he pops that Dark Swarm because he can pass through you. So the minute you get, you see that, then you can knock him back, make his point to retreat a lot longer and a little bit less likely he gets back. But this camp here, Greymane, when he gets in Worgen form, going to rip this apart. And the wave clear on the side of Simplicity mm -hmm. is not great. Pretty much non-existent unless you can get a good orb set up. We're stuffing a line for a swift strike. Endemic uses to swiftly rotate down, force ETC off of the point. 
what was problematic for Simplicity is their wave clear is centered in Blaze. Blaze went bottom because he knew that Avatar was soaking there. But because of this, Endemic have gotten a significant portion of these early shots. They go down, they take away some of these. And it's always nice to do that with an Avatar composition too, because as long as you don't lose forts, then you can heal up those structures. In Simplicity, they're not so lucky in what they have. Yeah, the, the fact that they already lost their top fort. Yes. That is a big loss. And, you know, when we look at the final damage of this, as you had alluded to, you know, those final shots went to that mid lane. And you can rest assured the mule will be healing that up as this goes on. And Simplicity definitely suffered quite a bit there. Yeah, that was just a better bruiser rotation. That's an abuse of Simplicity's lack of wave clear that we talked about. And it was Simplicity's choice to keep Blaze in the bottom and Endem Endemic taking advantage of that. And they're keeping this momentum going. Tiger JK has gotten low. Greymane's the first to go down, though. And Hosty says yes, please, to the reset. The Giants are stolen back by Simplicity, and with a Jet Propulsion, they'll claim another life. Yeah, the Deflect that came in there as well. The Dark Swarm ticks pretty quickly, so very nice Swift Strike in by K1 Pro, and everybody got a little bit of damage in there, and that's going to even up the experience a bit, too. You can see the positioning of Simplicity. They know that whenever they get an opportunity like this, Gilly, as you were mentioning with the mid lane, they have to confirm structures. You can't get them down to half and walk away. You have to fully commit, and it's a different play style you can see a very concerted effort here to go in as the Siege Giants help take down the gate. One tower, and they're going to go ahead and make it two, it looks like. We can see why Dainsky opted into Eyes in the Dark now with getting Wiz and Duelist. This is going to up his damage significantly if he can build those stacks. But it's a risky ordeal to build Wiz and Duelist into a double reset composition. One wrong <laughs> move. That's, that is a bullseye, if I've ever seen one on your back now from the Simplicity composition. The rare times that we have seen it, I feel like it's always been with an Uther or an Uther Tyrael or some combination of that. That way you have added protection to what you're going, except this time you're going into an Uther. So, and it, it, a lot of it is just so that you can move, move into Worgen form more confidently because you get more stacks when you do get the autos from Worgen. Mm -hmm. So it's generally been the mindset of those builds, but here a little different. It's gonna be up to Michael Udall, as you said at the outset. Got to protect a, a lot of this dive. Well, as always, the secondary temple phase, a single in the bottom, and with heroic abilities here from both, either can contest. Double global may give Endemic more options. We see ETC uh, up at the top along with Kier, and with that stage dive, he has the global now too. So no mosh pit to set up the double reset, even though we talked about the not as many amounts of interrupts. There's still enough for ETC to feel like he needs to go into that stage dive. Tiger JK. Now there's a Worgen clone, but we've got stage dive. It actually clears out the minions as the well. Bless Shield has been there. Dragon Blade going off as well. Dansky trying to get the kill. Swift Plus Strike. Palm. Paul, Michael Udall, and Dansky so low, but able to get out alive. That was extremely patient on the Palm. But I felt I, I was sure one of them was going to go down and the other would survive with Palm. The temple did not confirm that. Simplicity has all eyes on that. Hosty trying to put the damage out. I don't think they can make it in there. If you could get the oil and light it up behind that, I believe it's enough to kill the mule. Look at Endemic. They're going to collapse on this. Knowing exactly what they want to do. There's no clone. They still have that out of their hat. Bunker used. Three-man jet propulsion from Zuna as he's dragged away from his bunker. His home is safety. That mule the entire time doing work. And, you know, Endemic, you went in, you didn't get a kill, but you still come out positive in that yes. trade because of that. That's solely was the focus of distracting Simplicity and not allowing them to kill the mule while the mule got the heal up. Frustrating points for Simplicity that they're going to have to re-attack that for again later with shots. But even still, they're sticking with this double global now. The ETC helping out a lot to them. And that they still have an experience advantage gives them time to try to figure that out. Well, they're going to need a lot of help because we're in that situation mid-game to where it's top and bottom temple and the boss is still available. So you need to use those globals in that top lane to make sure that you don't give up in the bottom lane. And the boss in particular and gray main with Going into Worgen form, and the Kerazim can burst down the boss a little bit quicker than we would see between a Li Ming and a Genji. So we'll see how they approach this. And right now, there's an effort to control this top lane, at least momentarily. And I think that Endemic knows that Simplicity does not have the race potential on that boss. 
Yeah, you even give up some of the boss control by not having Mosh Pit too, but again, the stage dive, crucial to simplicity. That they have more options with this composition. Simplicity though are going all to the top after getting their giants, which puts them alongside that ETC instead of splitting him apart and then going to the other temple. Now they're gonna start heading down. Yeah, I think it's, let's get momentary control. Let's take care of the camp because that was one thing Endemic was doing is make sure to clear out the camp of Simplicity. So probably not much left there. Siege Giant picked up. And I think if they get a trade here, Simplicity's gonna be okay. They do have talent tier advantage. Johanna's starting to rotate up. Johanna has multiple stuns here. Here comes the Hawkeye. I think King Caffeine, he might be in some trouble. The thing is, j how by priori prioritizing this top instead, Endemic coming in and leaving him there, the Mule has been able to keep that top four alive, which we don't know if King Caffeine's out yet. There was a Blessed Shield. He's gonna stage dive now, but it does not matter. He goes down. This, the final tower shots from the temple in the bottom do get another fort, just barely. But that was very close when they're needing to get these structures. Con confirmation on those kills. Yeah, that mule will, I'm sure, be prioritized to that top lane now. So keeping things even. Zuna going to miss the jet propulsion there on to Dane. He's going to get a slow. I don't think he's going to get any help anytime soon. Stage dive, of course, is a thing. So if you do chase targets, you can always dive behind them. But without the rest of the team there, Going to go ahead and retreat. 14 to 14. Structures fairly even in this. Of course, Mule will heal that up. And so one fort still standing. Slightly diminished for both. Tiger JK said, I'm in to do that. Calculated. Just path through there, path through the other way. I just wanted a little cool dodging tongue. I knew it was going to be there. Nice iron skin. Knew the jet propulsion would be coming in. And especially with the rest of Simple Z rotating into a kill would have been very nice for them now though there's another jet propulsion there's a lot of burst damage stage dive as simplicity are desperate to get a fight desperate to get some kills do what they do best especially with that composition but it is not to be had it traded out heroics not a whole lot used there because stage dive a little bit longer than bless shield but the disengage i think was there so not the worst situation kira we're gonna see Trying to stop that. There's the stun, and now that should be to Haka as Li Ming starting to rotate up. That is on a 10 second cooldown. Wave of Force has to be held. The Isolation. Okay. But the boss, the boss, the boss. That was a significant amount of time gained. He's going to use Divine Shield to stand on the point. Can't go into Bunker here. Jet Propulsion hits him. Hosty's starting to come in. This is a really scary place for Endemic to be. Wow, once the clone went down, they were terrified of taking this fight. King Caffeine, there's going to be the power slide over. The knockback beacon, he's going to go down. And now all of a sudden, a boss has been picked up. A colossal mistake here for Endemic. They tried to make the sneaky play, but Simplicity holding strong. And all of a sudden, this game looks entirely different. Yeah, it was about as close as you could possibly get with Simplicity doing their best to deal with the Abathur, the Mule, the global pressure. But suddenly, one kill to Haka takes a long time trying to buy time with the double gray main and the divine shield blaze on the point that was everything just enough time to scare off with posty showing up this could have been a lot worse and it might be a lot worse because karazim has died and king caffeine stage dives in dainsky is going to fall this is a huge problem for endemic j how it's going from bad to worse because simplicity now is not just looking to keep they're looking at game two members down and an abathur on the other side only cure and beacon stand in the way that is a dehaka and a johanna Shield starting to fall. Beacon holding his own. The clone's going to be there. Bless Shield out, trying to buy some time. Jet propulsion is there, 90% falling. And just like that, Simplicity looking to close out this series. I think they might have it as the shield's down 50%, Gilly. 50% continuing to fall. Tiger JK would love to die because he drops the Divine Shield before he does so. But Li Ming went down. K1 Pro's getting it fairly low. The siege of this double reset, not something to shout about, but you still have a very healthy King Caffeine. And even as the other two were almost to die, Simplicity holds, taking down Endemic 
three to one in this series. That game was about as measured pace as we've seen. 15 to 15, you get a pick, we get a pick, structures are the same, two fort towers or two <laughs> forts still standing. And then that was one of the most abrupt endings you will see <laughs> and making use of that global. And it's like, let's go. And the minute Michael Udo stepped forward, he got exploded. And yes. from, from then on, it was over. That it was. And man, is it awesome to see that level of change for simplicity. It's a welcome first step in what was a lot of role changes, one roster change, bringing on a coach, putting the effort in, getting a win on Endemic, when Endemic looked really good versus No Tomorrow, just proves we don't quite have things as figured out as we <laughs> thought they might be. Kind of wondered if things had already kind of taken a little bit of form, at least towards mm -hmm. the bottom end, but it definitely has not. So the fact that Simplicity has been able to do that, and if you look at the drafts, you're like, all right, they lost 3-1, but that one that they lost was with a, an old school ETC Tyrael Illidan composition. So definitely trying to shift up the meta, but they played well. I think when they played meta or slightly off meta with a Sergeant Hammer, who might actually just be full on meta at this point, uh, they looked good. And that is a very different draft mentality than we saw on Friday. And it is so much better for them coming into this form. You can understand that Endemic may have been taken aback from a lot of those drafts, though they got through the Illidan, uh, the <laughs> double Sergeant Hammer, and then just straight up uh, a double reset composition is it feels like where Simplicity, if anywhere, would thrive with that kind of team fighting. Um, but it was the calls behind that, too. The macro pressure, dealing with the Dahaka Abathur, staying in, trying to deal with the Mule, too, that I think was was extra impressive from Simplicity. And talking about them moving forward now, I want consistency. I want more of that from them because that has been a, a, a problem for a lot of teams in HGC is, yes, you can win a series, but can you keep that going? Well, I hate to reference it so quickly after defeat, but in Michael Udall's interview mm -hmm. coming into the series, he said that consistently has been something his previous teams have lacked, not just through this year, not through last year, but for the last couple of years. And he that was a point that he made in his own interview. And right now, coming into this weekend, getting two wins would have been a phenomenal start for them. But now you suffer defeat for a team that you felt confident that you could take down. So consistency on both yeah. sides is going to be needed. And it's a lot to ask for, consistency from so many changes right out of the gates. That's going to be hard when hero pools might be limited because you're role changing or you're still getting used to uh, each other as a team. But the sooner that you can get to that consistent nature, the better. Let's check in with Hosty now after his big win over Endemic. Congratulations, Hosty. How are you guys feeling? <laughs> oh, man, we're feeling amazing right now. Good. <laughs> you I just, should. I don't know what else to say. I'm... <laughs> that was a hard series. Yeah, uh, we have a lot to ask you, like especially about drafting, but you guys looked way different from your first series this weekend. So what happened? What changed? What went down between the two series? Um, a couple notable things. The first series was an away game, um, which we generally struggle with. On top of that, uh, we came in, our drafts, were, we were very open-minded. We were like, okay, let's experiment. Let's try a couple different things. Like we said, we have two role swaps. We have a new player. Um, we have a new drafter, new shot caller. So a lot of changes, and we're just experimenting. We're working on rebuilding. We're not too concerned on winning the game right now. Mm -hmm. That's our second biggest priority right now. It's making sure that we're at the best spot we can be so we can make those lands. You guys picked up Equinox, and that has been obviously a really big pickup for you guys. Equinox has a ton of experience in Heroes of the Storm. Talk to us a little bit about the impact he, as a coach, has made for your team. So um, he's done a lot of things right now. So he's helped us with draft. Um, he's helping us just with if there's any internal conflicts, um, going through replays together. He's just, uh, and he thinks a lot like us, you know, he's, he's very um, team fight oriented, mm -hmm. but we're also really trying to focus on the macro and making sure we don't fall behind because once we fall behind, that's when we struggle. So um, he, he's been helping us a ton. Well, you could see that evidence just from one series to the next. So congratulations. Really great, really fun series from you guys. I know Jay has got some questions for you guys, maybe about some certain heroes. <laughs> Thank you, Gilly. Maybe, maybe some more Yitzo heroes, but Sergeant Hammer. Was Sergeant Hammer a thing before or after midseason brawl? 
Um, for me personally, it was only a thing after mid-season brawl. I saw Rich on it, and I was like, okay, I guess this is a hero I have to play now. Um, I saw him playing it in Hero League. I'd watch his streams often to see what he does, and he'd just win with it. And I, I just thought it was Rich, you know? He just he wins with anything. So, But it turns out it's actually a hero. Yeah, sometimes after you watch him, you just put one hour in and everything's gravy here in North America. Uh, but also, you guys uh, ran that Illidan composition, and obviously that had a very Equinox feel, but it's a very classic feel that we saw, though. But on the ETC, where's your comfort level in that? You are the flex player. You have always been a more traditional <laughs> flex player. But the ETC might have had a few flaws there. H how do you come about shoring that up to make that composition maybe be a little bit smoother? I mean, we've played that comp before, you know, last season. I was not on the ETC. Um, that's very evident. Uh, I did throw <laughs> that game for my team. You know, it, it hurts. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry uh, to the Simplicity fans out there and to my team. I'm going to keep working on it. You know, I want to be the best flex player I could be, and that includes just filling whatever for the team. If ETC looks good, I should be able to play it at a professional level, and right now I can't, so that's on me. It, it, look, it looked okay. I think, obviously, there's going to be some minor things there, but it feels like the flexibility that you've brought to your teams traditionally, it, it, was, it was more of a compliment than nothing because I know that you, as a flex player, have traditionally always played a little bit of everything, and it brings an added element to your team. So uh, I, I, did, I meant that more as a compliment there. But when we look at this team in particular with the role swaps, we even see you on Li Ming and K1 on that Genji, and we kind of anticipated here at the desk that might actually be a little bit different because he's known to be the Li Ming player but before Zuna was the Genji player is this really the the setup that you guys want to have that flexibility on that backline something I've talked to you about coming into this week but the flexibility of you and K1 on that backline is terrifying once you get that front line solidified yeah I, I agree with that so right now um the way we're doing it is you know who whoever's best at whatever hero is is generally who plays it um Minus the ETC, for example. But in the back line, me and K1, you know, we have different strengths. Um, you know, he, he's a great roamer. He's more macro-oriented than me. He's uh, more more vocal. So we put him on a lot of those heroes that are making plays on the map, looking, scouting people out. So that's that's more of his defined role. But like I said, we're, we are very flexible. I'm going to give you one more question for us, send you back to Gilly. But for this weekend, obviously, you guys had a very rough start on Friday. I think everybody would acknowledge that. But picking up a pretty big win here against the team that is considered to be contending for the top four here in North America, if you guys fall 0-2, obviously, that's a rough start. But you guys actually picked up a pretty clutch win here. What does this mean to the team right now to get this kind of early start to shake off that first series? I mean, the first series definitely hurt. But like I said, it was an away game, and we were experimenting with drafts. And it's against Team Freedom, who, you know, I, I don't see them not being top three. So um, we we didn't expect a W for sure. You know, we were going into it. We, we want the win, but we, we obviously didn't get it. Um, versus Endemic, we're, we're, uh, we were pretty confident. You know, like, they're a great team. And I think towards the end, they're just going to... They're just going to surprise a lot of people. But right now, where it stands, I think we had the advantage. And I think we proved it. Well, you proved it in my eyes today. You looked much, much better today. Congratulations on a big victory. Thank you so much, Jay Howe. Well, maybe not so confident versus Team Freedom. Confident versus Endemic and Warranted. How, where are you guys at as far as Tempo Storm? Because that's who you got up next. Um, so Tempo is a great team, no doubt. I do think they lost the best player in North America, uh, which will hurt them in the short run, but uh, you know, I don't know who they're using next week, but whoever it is, I think we have a good shot. We're going to we're going to come in as hard as we can and hopefully we get the W. Well, Hosty, you are a super hard worker. You are awesome to have in the scene. I'm very happy to see you guys have the success. Congratulations. Hope you can keep it up. And now if you have any shout outs, the floor is yours. Uh, first off, shout out to my team. They played phenomenally. They showed up. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, Simplicity. Keep it simple. Also, Equinox, thank you so much. You've done a great job. Let's keep it going. And shout out to you guys as casters, Gilly and Jay Howe. You did a phenomenal job. And shout out to all the hostages out there in chat. Oh, baby. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Congrats again, Hostie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> His subscriber people, for anybody <laughs> wondering. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Hostages are. That's maybe not. You gotta have some context there. Hosty. Just, just wait. Go to his stream and ask him like how he came up with Hosty. It's actually a pretty <laughs> funny story. He he was forced into that name, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy for him because when I first saw him like join up with this roster, the old gods of sort, uh, they were even named that. It was like, wow, Hosty, you are like amidst a sea of like these very old veterans and he has not only held his own but I think even turned himself into a standout player in that time on the roster like you said he's very flexible him and K1 Pro being back on that back line is pretty terrifying as Endemic has found out today really good stuff from Simplicity and I hope they get to carry it forward and next week we'll see when we're gonna see them as well as what you can expect on Friday actually I think it was they don't play Tempo Storm until Sunday but what do we got for Friday Friday next week, Jay Howe. I mean, this is a good start for a lot of people because Fnatic versus Granite Gaming, both 0-1-1, unexpected. We expected more potentially from those teams, mm -hmm. but the afternoon part of that and the later part of EU, Dignitas versus Method, and Method obviously with the chains, kicking it back old school, might have enough firepower to take down Dignitas before we hit NA. NA is going to be Heroes Hearth Esports taking on LFM Esports. You know, Heroes Hearth has had a lot more of success so far that we've seen than their LFM counterparts who came in at the same time from the same Crucible. But nonetheless, looking to see LFM bring the fight to Heroes Hearth. Finally, though, Tempo Storm versus Octalysis. We heard a little bit about, about this match from Cattle, and it promises to be a good one. Everybody, grab your popcorn, sit around on a Friday night, or really early morning if you're in EU, and enjoy that series. Because that is Tempo Storm, who we know is to be a number one contender, and Octalysis, who has made no qualms about it at all. They've been very public, not very, very, but they have made it known. They want to be a number one team. This is two top contenders for a while now in North America that will be facing off Friday night. I personally am looking forward to that. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, just like we saw Heroes Hearth versus Team Freedom this weekend, next weekend, that does have a lot of implications, not only going forward toward the Western Clash, but even further, because when you talk about BlizzCon and our global championship, uh, there's only one, maybe two spots that are guaranteed, and then you need to be getting every single game and match win that you possibly can because you want to be as high up as possible when we start looking toward playoffs. Yeah, that was kind of the impact that we saw last time. Heroes Hearth had an outside shot. They ran the table in part two, even taking down Tempo Storm, but Tempo Storm did not drop a whole lot of series wins exactly. going into that. And so that played a big part of them with their automatic qualifier vid, just unable to get past all of that. So getting the wins early over top teams then potentially just losing maybe one or two for the entirety of phase two does put you in top contention for that. And that's how Tempo got there they earned it can somebody else earn it this time though? we'll have to see this has been a wonderful first weekend back for phase two we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did we'll be back next weekend with more from the heroes global championship good night Started by Zuna lurking in the bush. Three members down now and forward trying to force us out. Here comes Arrow. the Dragon Arrow. Dragon Zero only hits Sergeant Hammer play of the game as Dansky pops back up and agility is out. Blunt Force Gun forces Cure into the bunker. And we do have that good old-fashioned fight, but a double taunt spells the end of plays. A drag brings in B-Kid, forcing the indestructible. Now the silence causing massive amounts of problems from Endemic. Well, Taka does fall. Pulse Bomb's gonna be there. King Caffeine gets stuffed. He's eating a lot of damage. Healing Pulse is gonna be there. There's gonna be the heal earthquake. They're ready to engage. There's gonna be the root. B Kid going in deep. Gonna drop down the stun. There's gonna be the Divine, Shield, Divine Storm. That is another kill there. BP out though. See if they can turn this around. Yeah, it doesn't matter who they wreck. There is going to be the self unstoppable. Into a taunt with the purification salvo as K1 Pro walks in and a drag drags back Thrall into the salvo. A three for one in Simplicity's favor. Dansky took advantage of that 16. Look at Tiger. Tiger with the body blocks, bringing the hammer. That's what I call tank Uther. 
Tanks are going to keep Hosty in place, so no follow up there. Does get a little bit of movement speed, still holding on. There's going to be a power slide in. Mike Udall is taking so much damage. He's going to be the first to fall. Sanctification is going to be used. Avatar is out, but Zuna is about to run wild here because there is nothing to keep that up. But K1 Pro. Biggie trying to get the resets, unable to do so just yet. Yeah, he's untouched and shelling out skill shots over the wall. Takes out Jaina for the first reset. Very crux of how this plays out. I like seeing Simplicity rotate in after pulling down a lot of the people. It's going to be stage right on top of Michael Udall who goes into an ice block. He's stunned out of Twilight Dream again, knocked back. Michael Udall is in an absolutely terrible position. And with that sanctification, it's enough for Simplicity to get that kill. Holy Ground wanted to do, take people away from that drag, but that drag was phenomenal from Cure in tying up the kills. Ooh, that missed, and that's going to be a combo. Actually, the orb hit right out of ice block. The Holy Ground's going to be there. To scare off with Posty showing up, this could have been a lot worse, and it might be a lot worse because Karazim has died, and King Caffeine stage dives in. Dainsky is going to fall. This is a huge problem for Endemic J House. It's going from bad to worse because Simplicity now not just looking at keep, they're looking at game. Two members down and an Abathur on the other side. Only Cure and Beacon stand in the way. That is a Dehaka and a Johanna. Shield starting to fall. Beacon holding his own. The clone's going to be there. Bless Shield out, trying to buy some time. Jet Propulsion is there, 90% falling. And just like that, Simplicity looking to close out this series. I think they might have it as the Shield down 50% killing. 50%.